Ripple Support is an online project that is about to start trialing a new education model. I see the trials leading to an online tournament where groups of people who could be families or teams of students representing schools from different countries compete with each other in acquiring knowledge to address some pressing problems of modern society. I'm Dr. Lena Redman, independent educational researcher, and I invite you to this exploratory and, as you will see, groundbreaking project. I developed this model during my doctoral study, and those who are interested can read about its theoretical underpinning in my book, Knowing with New Media, a multimodal approach for learning. You can also find there a number of examples of educational projects to implement uh, the approach. In the previous video, I argued for the necessity of devising a new form of learning that takes into account the way technology and globalization are rapidly changing the conditions of the job market and creating a new, previously unknown working environment. In this uh, the fifth video in the series. I would like to draw your attention to the political dimension of our work and the need to democratize education. When I say our world, perhaps I don't sound very much like someone who belongs to the world you regard as yours. This is because I was born and grew up in Russia, where people don't usually speak English. When they talk about the world, they consider theirs. <laughs> For the last half of my life, I've been living in the West. So when I refer to the world as ours, I embrace my personal nomadic reality, as well as the enhanced mobility of modern life that is a big part of today globalization. And when I refer to modern education as universal, I'm talking about the knowledge and skills that young people need to be equipped with to experience a life of prosperity and self-realization, no matter what part of the world they live in. To achieve this in our world, people need to think beyond geopolitical borders, and we willing to collaborate with professionals through newly emerging channels of communication where the diversity of accents is as wide as the number of demographic groups on Earth. While borders and languages are blurring, the political climate within Western countries is going in the opposite direction. The divisions are growing sharper and more prominent. Until recently, the whole world regarded liberal democracy as the only game in town in the famous phrase of Joan J. Linz and Alfred Stephen. The game wasn't perfect but seem to be conducive to a well-balanced, continuous progression towards individual liberty, on the one hand, and social equality, on the other. Mm, really? I hear voices objecting to the validity of what I just said. And this is precisely why I believe that modern education is failing us. What I am saying is this. There are many people, especially young people, who are resolute in their skepticism when presented with the case for liberal democracy, because during their school years they were deprived of the opportunity to learn what liberal democracy actually was and still remains in comparison to all other forms of government that have been tried from time to time to borrow Winston Churchill's words. A truly democratic approach to learning has never been integrated into school curricula. Students are not really given a chance 
to experiment with, let alone invent new social compositions. But think about it, the classroom can actually be used as a social science workshop, a democratic laboratory, if you like, where students can decide for themselves what it means to be a good citizen. But unfortunately, this opportunity is not being taken advantage of. John Dewey and Jean Piaget, both democratic thinkers and renowned de developmental psychologists, remind us about the concept of interaction being at the heart of the growing individual. At the beginning of the 20th century, John Dewey wrote that the danger of formal instruction isolated from life experience was never greater than at the present time on account of the rapid growth in the last few centuries of knowledge and technical modes of skills. But despite this warning, modern education fell into exactly the trap of using formal instruction to, be, to teach isolated abstract knowledge and technical modes of skills, overwhelming all other aspects of learning. Classrooms became safe spaces for learning with abstract symbols where real life experience was hardly acknowledged. Why are we so scared of students gathering their own information and testing their own ideas? David Ramseyman, professor of politics at Cambridge University, once joked in the Minefield podcast, if we allowed children to vote, they probably wouldn't have elected Donald Trump. <laughs> Isn't it true that even little children know that a man who mocks a disabled person is not a good man? A man who talks about women in such a manner that his words played on TV have to be muted is a rude man. How come then grown-ups didn't care about putting their lives and the lives of their children into the hands of a bad and vulgar man? I see the rise of Trumpism as the result of the fact that today's adults came from classrooms where for the last few decades there was no space to explore and understand the real life experiences of social interaction. And what we see now is actually a demonstration of the saying attributed to Abraham Lincoln. The philosophy of the schoolroom in one generation will be the philosophy of government in the next. Recent generations didn't learn at school that liberal democracy is so far the highest point of our social progress, much in the way that Homo sapiens is the pinnacle of human biological evolution, at least as we know it today. In a millennium, if humans and their society still exist, they will be talking about forms of social evolution that we are not aware of yet. But right now, at this point of time, after centuries of bloody and cruel experimentation, we, homo sapiens, wise men, have invented the best form of government we ever knew called liberal democracy. There has never been any other political system where, the social, where social equality is set in tension with individual liberty. And where, in pursuit of their self-interest, people try to do their best to satisfy the interests of others. A balance of prosperity and dignity is the package that liberal democracy delivers. It is a kind of seesaw. The healthy, temporary overpowering powering of one political force by another creates a transitory point of balance until the next instability. And that is how liberal democracy works.
So the Ripples at Work model sees liberal democracy as the best social order for the democratization of learning. This is because the Ripples at Work concept of social equality is framed in the uniqueness of each individual. And that is why the Ripples at Work model is developed on the interrelations of the individual and the surroundings, where society is one of its central aspects. This individual uniqueness is the intertwining of the particular genetic predispositions, specific upbringing, cultural traditions and social habits of each student. Ripples at Work aims to create a learning system where every student has an equal opportunity to learn about and practice their individual uniqueness and develop a set of individual skills to pursue self-interest by satisfying the interests of others. Many people believe that the crisis of liberal democracy that we are experiencing today is the result of the economic crisis of 2008. In my book, I really do care, shouldn't we all? Which you can buy from Amazon.com. I argue that we have to look further back, rewind all the way to 1957, when the Russians launched Sputnik. This event scared Westerners so badly that they started reforming the education system, setting it on a course similar to that of Soviet education, focused predominantly on science and technology. This led to increased IQ scores, but it also resulted in the rapid decline of political and cultural literacy and the ruin of collaboration and empathy, leading to the birth of a self-centered, entertainment-addicted, I don't care culture. IDC culture served as fertile soil for the build-up of unprecedented inequality and the rise of Trump-like leaders who operate on the principle I don't care about others. This is one end of the political spectrum. And the opposite end has been seized by socialist movement, which grows on the worldview of I don't care about historical facts. We know better. These are the two polarities of our current affairs. And as long as the philosophy of education remains framed in the standardized science technology market competition box, IDC culture will prosper, tearing apart the fabric of liberal democracy. In the trials of the Ripples at Work model that these videos promote, I propose a system which I believe is opposite to the one that cultivates the IDC psychology. The focus of Ripple's work is to create a context that enables individuals to construct the individual path towards self-actualization while respecting and caring for others. So, if you are a parent, a teacher, an educational researcher or a student who recognizes the decline of Western liberal democracy and the rapid rise of populism, join us in our Facebook Ripples at Work trials. Visit the Ripples at Work Facebook page where you can find printable pages that accompany each video, fill in the form to register yourself as a participant and I'll see you soon in our exciting and very important project to help a growing population to develop informed civic and political positions and to take a confident stance in protecting individual liberties while striving for social equality.